when were the dinosaurs here? We don't know for certain. But what I'm going to do is give you some very interesting theories because these are the deep and secret things. So some of it may be a bit strange. So we don't just want to occupy our mind with all this stuff. Because Hebrews 13.9 says. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart may be established with grace. Not with meats which have not purified them that have been occupied therein. So we don't want to spend all our time thinking about the deep and secret things. Although it is very fun. But here are some interesting theories about when the dinosaurs could have been here if they ever really were here no one can ever really know i mean we're just speculating because we're all friends here we're all bible believers here there's really no need for anybody to get mad at anybody about anything concerning this stuff but the first theory and this is the one i go with is that they were here during the days of noah now, what you have to remember is during the days of Noah that men were living long periods of time. And if you don't know that, I'll give you some examples. Genesis chapter 5 is the best way to show somebody how long these guys were actually living way back in Genesis. Genesis 5.5, 5, And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. So Adam was alive for 930 years. Genesis 5.8, All the days of Seth were 912 years. Genesis 5.11, all the days of Enos were 905 years. Genesis 5.14, and all the days of Canaan were 910 years. Genesis 5.17, and all the days of Mahalalel were 895 years. Genesis 5.20, and all the days of Jared were 962 years. Genesis 5.27, and all the days of Methuselah were 969 years. And he's in the Genesis Book of World Records for the most years lived that we know about. Not really, but I mean, he's the he's been around the longest that we know of. Genesis five thirty one. And all the days of Lamech were seven hundred seventy and seven years. So that is a long life that man was living, and you can't imagine what type of things they were inventing. You can imagine their wisdom and knowledge and understanding that the saints would have had, the ones that lived a long life and lived it godly. At the same time, you can't imagine how wicked a lost 900-year-old would have been. I said all that to say this. If a man lived a long time, it makes sense that animals would have lived longer as, to, as well, longer than they're living now. They say that a reptile can continue to grow as long as they are alive. So if you have a reptile living a few hundred years, this could be a possibility of dinosaur-like creatures. Also, maybe a, a certain animal that was a lot, was already 900 and something years old when the flood came, and this was like an aquatic animal that could live lived underwater, you know. He would have also survived the flood and lived no telling how long. At the same time, it's fun to think about certain animals that could have been alive back then that we don't have today. I would love to be a fly on the wall back in the days of Noah and see the animals and just the cities, how things worked, what it all looked like, and just see it played out on a big screen somewhere. I would pay big money to see that. The things Noah and those men would have seen would be incredible to us, but it was the normal for them. To us, it's the deep and secret things. To them, it was just every day, like breathing, what they saw. But that is one theory where the dinosaurs came from. And when they were here. Now theory number two. And I'll have to explain some more stuff to you. That, to go along with this. But the theory number two. Is that they were here during the gap. Now the gap is something. That a lot of people will consider to be a theory itself. Which that's fine too. If somebody doesn't believe in the gap. And I personally don't believe. That the dinosaurs were here during the gap. I believe they were here during the days of Noah. But the gap is something. That a lot of people will consider to be a theory. So. I'm not pushing that as pushing that on you or nothing. However, it's a possibility that the dinosaurs are here during that gap between Genesis 1 1 and 1 2. I'm going to show you the gap. Genesis 1 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Gap. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 
something happened in between the first two verses, and the earth was without form and void. A catastrophe happened here. An act of destruction from God himself, and then the earth was without form and void. He recreates everything in six literal days. That's the what they call the gap theory. Pretty much what you have in this gap is the time when the devil was Lucifer, the anointed cherub, and the Lord had given him dominion over the earth. The reptile class of, of cherubim is the only class missing from the cherubim. The devil could have represented the reptile class when he was the anointed cherub, since he is called a serpent and a dragon. This could also be why there could have been dinosaur-like creatures during that time which would have washed, been washed out in that universal flood back between the first two verses of the Bible. Not Noah's flood, it's a different flood. I mean, this is complete speculation that the dinosaurs were here. I'm just giving you a theory that some people believe. Like I said, I tend to believe that if there were dinosaurs, if there were dinosaurs, that they were here during the days of Noah. I do believe in the gap, but I don't, I don't believe it has anything to do with evolution or a pre-human race. And the earth still doesn't have to be million, millions of years old. I st actually still believe in a young earth. I just believe the gap explains the time period that the devil was Lucifer on a throne and he had dominion. I, am, I simply am believing that the devil sinned before Adam through his pride. He wasn't content with being the second highest authority. He didn't, he didn't want to be under God. He wanted to be an authority above God. He falls, and then Adam makes man and gives Adam dominion in Genesis 126. A lot of people will have Satan and Adam sinning for the first time at the same event. But this won't work because Satan has dominion before he sins. And Isaiah 14 shows us that he had a throne. Genesis 126 shows us that Adam at one time had dominion. So Satan had to lose the throne before Adam can take it. You see what I mean? They don't have it at the same time. And that's why the devil doesn't like Adam and Eve to begin with. Satan had to sin before Adam. And many people who don't believe in the gap will run you to Romans 5.12 where it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So they teach that Adam had to be the first one to sin, and that Lucifer having a throne in the gap is an impossibility since sin came in the world through Adam. Now sin did come in the world through Adam because the seed comes from the man. This doesn't mean that Adam was the first person to sin. And the Bible shows us that Adam was not the first person to sin. So you can't use Romans 5.12 to disprove the gap. And I'm going to show you that Adam was not the first person to sin. In 1 Timothy 2.14 it says, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Eve actually sinned before Adam. She went against the word of God first and ate from the tree first first adam wasn't even deceived he sinned against god knowing full well what he was doing because he loved his wife more than he loved god also remember that the devil even sinned before eve in this instance as well and he's the one that got her to question what god had already told her so romans 5 12 definitely doesn't disprove the gap the devil had already fallen before he even approached eve he sinned way before that the scripture proof that points towards the gap could go on and on. I've done studies on it before. Non-gappers will many times slander people who believe in a gap by saying we're trying to give credit to science, falsely so-called. We're trying to shove all the um, questions about science that we can't answer into the first, in between the first two verses of the Bible. That's not what I'm doing at all. This slander completely misrepresents the teaching that they put on us. Because we're not teaching evolution. We don't believe God used evolution at all. They say we're trying to find a place to stick millions of years and that we're using the gap to do so. But that's untrue because I still believe in a young earth. I don't believe the earth is millions of years old. I don't know how old it is. I'm just saying I, I don't. They say we are trying to make humans before Adam. That's untrue because I've never believed, nor do I know any other Bible believer who believes that we're, there were humans before Adam. We believe Adam was the first human and that man has been around 6,000 years and the earth mo most likely isn't that much older than that. So to pretend that the gap is a damnable heresy, as many people want to believe that it is, would make a lot of great men heretics because men such as Harold Seitler, 
C.I. Schofield, Peter Ruckman, James Knox, and Clarence Larkin, some of the greatest defenders of the deity of Christ, some of the greatest defenders of salvation by grace through faith without works in the King James Bible. They all believed in the gap. So it's not like you're you know, not in good company if you believe in a gap. That's some pretty good company. Harold Seitler, C.I. Schofield, Peter Ruckman, James Knox, Clarence Larkin, people from all different camps of Bible-believing uh, people believed in a gap. It's not just some weird fringe of people out there that believe in it. And look at your Schofield Reference Bible. And most uh, uh, Baptists today are using that Schofield Reference Bible as they have for years. Look at Genesis 1-1 and you'll see in between the first two verses he's got something there showing you that he believes in a gap. But the topic of this study was dinosaurs. It's impossible it's it's impossible to know if they were really here. It's impossible to, for me to know when they were actually here. I'm just giving you some possibilities. I believe it was in the days of Noah. It is possible they were around back then during the gap. But I did a Deep and Secret Things episode a while back on Leviathan from Job 41. And a lot of the uh, study Bibles will say he's a dinosaur or some type of animal. I believe he is the devil in his natural state. However, I also believe Leviathan was an actual creature on the earth at one point. Similar to how the king of Tyrus was an actual man in Ezekiel 28. But it uses him to address the devil. In Ezekiel 28, it calls the devil the king of Tyrus. So in Job 31, it's the devil, but it calls him Leviathan. You see, it can call the devil something else and be addressing the devil. And in Isaiah 27, 1, it says, In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Here it calls Leviathan a serpent and a dragon. The devil is a serpent and a dragon. That is what he looks like now in his natural state, a great red dragon, and he just appears as an angel of light and minister of righteousness. But there was most likely also a creature similar to that at one time on this planet that pictures the devil. But Job 41, I believe, is directly addressing the devil and calling him Leviathan. It says he is king over all the children of pride. It says there was none his like who was made without fear. Now that can't be referring to a crocodile. That can't be referring to any animal you know of. It has to be referring to the devil. But Leviathan could have been a creature back then, and he could have been dinosaur-like. And so that's where, you know, people get the idea maybe that was a dinosaur. The same goes for Behemoth in Job 40. In Job 40, 15, it says, Behold now, Behemoth, which I made thee, he eateth grass as an ox. Now, you're going to see Behemoth is a type of the devil. It's a, and, uh, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, one of the types of the Antichrist, ate grass like an ox in Daniel 4.33. The devil is likened to cattle in Genesis 3.14. It says, Behemoth, he eateth grass as an ox. Lo, now his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his uh, stones was wrapped together. His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like the bars of iron. He is the chief of the ways of God. He that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. Notice it says, He that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. God is the one who made him, and only his sword can take him out, specifically a sharp two-edged sword at the second coming. Behemoth, a picture of the Antichrist, the devil incarnate. Notice it calls him the chief of the ways of God. In Job 40 and verse 19, this is something more than just an animal. The same way Leviathan is king over all the children of pride. So Behemoth represents something spiritual. As Leviathan represents something spiritual, for everything you see, it represents something that you cannot see. Behemoth, spiritually speaking, would be spiritual wickedness in high places. A ruler of the darkness of this world. See Ephesians 6. Job 40 and verse 20. Surely the mountains bring him forth food where all the beasts of the field play. Most likely, there was a creature that was like Behemoth. As you can see, he has characteristics like an animal. However, looking at it the, another way, the mountain bringeth forth food. Kind of reminds us of men who were eating on the mountains, on the tops of the mountains. They were 
where they were committing idolatry up there at the same time. In Ezekiel 18, 15, it says, That hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, hath not defiled his neighbor's wife. So it says, That hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel. In Job 40 and verse 20, it says, Surely the mountains bring him forth food, where all the beasts of the field play. Could be referring to some type of idol worship, as Ezekiel 18, 15 is talking about, connecting behemoth which, with spiritual wickedness in high places. Because that's where they went to the high place to worship their false gods. And then it says in Job 40, 21, He lieth under the shady trees, in the covert of the reed and fins. The shady trees cover him with their shadow. The willows of the brook can pass him about. Notice the shady trees and their shadow also associated with idolatry, connecting behemoth with spiritual wickedness going on. Uh, Hosea 4.13, they sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains. Notice those mountains again. And burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms because the shadow thereof is good. And where's behemoth? The shady trees cover him with their shadow. Now Job 40, 23, Behold, he drinketh up a river, and hasteth not. He trusteth that he can draw up Jordan into his mouth. And you remember what the devil does in Revelation 12, 15, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Notice the constant connections between behemoth, the devil, the Antichrist. Job 40 and 24, he taketh it with his eyes, his nose pierceth through snares. You ever see those magicians, they will sometimes squint their eyes and move an object? It says, he taketh it with his eyes. Behemoth taketh it with his eyes. Also, he is a seducer, just like the wicked woman in Proverbs. The devil's a seducer who takes things with his eyes. And that woman that's a seducer, she takes things with her eyelids. In Proverbs 6, 25, Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. So behemoth. I believe, doctrinally speaking, he's referring to the devil or the antichrist. But, but at the same time, I think sometime in history, there was an animal similar to behemoth. And he could have been dinosaur-like. And Leviathan was a cre some type of creature sometime in history, but he's also the devil. And God uses Leviathan and, and, the, and Behemoth to illustrate what the devil's like. Just like he, he talking about uh, some people, he, he calls them a fox. He calls them a brute beast. You know, he'll use a wolf to describe a, a false prophet, a wolf in sheep's clothing. He use, he'll use a vicious animal, intimidating animal, to describe these wicked spiritual wickedness in high places because for everything that you can see, it represents something that you cannot see. So, behemoth, leviathan, they, they could have been dinosaur-like creatures that were on the earth at one point back then. I personally believe the dinosaurs were around in the days of Noah and they were they grew so big because reptiles continue to grow as long as they're alive, and if they live 900 to 1,000 years, they're going to be some pretty big animals. So, that's my theory on it. This has been the deep and secret things. I hope it helps some people. This was also answering some question and answer emails at the same time, but it was, it got into some strange stuff, so I thought this should go with the deep and secret things, so I made it into a deep and secret things episode.